This is a game of Nepomniashi, the World Championship Challenger in 2021 that I have been wanting to show you guys since quite some time. There are two reasons for that. The first one is that to understand how tricky and how tactically aware this player is, Nepo. And the second thing which I want to show you with this game is how when you learn one concept, you can look at some you know other concepts which are similar but not exactly the same and try to apply them this is something that top players do very well because once they learn a concept they start applying it beautifully even in scenarios which are similar not the same so let's begin with the game uh, and before we go to the game i want to show you one small uh, well known tactical motif which is known as the greek gift d4 knight f6 this is a game of greco so not particularly wonderfully played but h4 castles and now comes this idea where you go e5 okay you hit the knight the knight has to move and white to play what do you do here yes you are absolutely right if you said bishop takes h7 king takes and knight g5 notice how the rook is on h1 and the pawn on h4 defends the knight so you cannot really take it because if you take it the pawn opens up the rook and it's a check to the king so if you go king g8 then after queen h5 it is a forced mate i mean there is no way to prevent it for example you could take and then after hg5 f5 you try to run away from here but in comes a very typical move g6 and the game is over so this is well known way also after knight g5 if you come up here that is also not going to work because after queen d3 check f5 e takes f6 king f6 the king is just too exposed and there are many ways to finish him off maybe queen f3 uh, king g6 and h5 is the fastest way with the king having to move to, uh, in the line of this bishop and there will be a deadly discovered check so in the game he took the knight and after hg uh, if you go king g8 we've already seen queen h5 wins so he came up check king f5 and now came queen h3 check uh, and wherever the king goes it's a mate queen g6 king g6 queen h7 king g4 queen d3 oops sorry no don't plunder the queen i was going queen d3 checkmate okay so you now know what the greek gift sacrifice is all about it's about sacrificing on h7 and then bringing your knight here and then the queen joins in and eventually it's a checkmate okay so nepo in this game he's playing a very strong russian player sanan sujiro uh, and Sanan is also young and talented and this was played in 2016 Russian team championship. It was the Petrov. Nepo is white. He took the pawn d6, knight f3, knight to e4. And now generally the moves that are played are d4 or d3. But Nepo went for the move c4 which is also possible. Uh, mainly he is playing against the move d5. Okay, bishop e7 looks logical. d4 capturing more space in the center castles bishop d3 knight to g5 and here nepo realized that maybe castling here is not a great idea because then bishop g4 and there is some sort of a pin and he may have to move his bishop back again so he decided to just bring his knight out and in this position black made a mistake but it's a very natural mistake if you think it's a classical game it's move number eight and it is played by a 26 74 player it cannot be so bad he played bishop g4 by the way the better way to continue would have been either to take the knight to play rook e8 or to play knight c6 all of these moves seem pretty okay but bishop g4 what could be more natural than pinning this knight and now i would like you to take some time over here maybe take around 15 minutes if you haven't seen this game and try to figure out how should white win in this position it's a it's beautiful uh, how white finishes his opponent off 
Now the first thing that might have moved, uh, you know, come to your mind because I showed you the Greek gift is bishop at seven, but then just after uh, knight takes at seven, nothing really works there. So you first go and take on g5. This is the first move that you have to play. If he takes on f3, then after queen f3, bishop g5 and queen b7, white is better. He's just simply won a pawn. So he must take back the bishop here. Now, this is where things can get tricky because uh, you could consider some move like, you know, here, um, I don't know, knight takes g5, trying to take advantage. But once you lose the queen, bishop at 7, king h8, there is nothing. So, so you're thinking to yourself, what should you do here? And then you spot this move, which is simply brilliant. You take here. And how does this work? Because after king h7, what is happening? Well, this is where Nepo reveals the move that was, that is the key to this entire combination. And congratulations if you saw it beforehand. The move is h4. Believe it or not, it's such an amazing move because you're creating a threat to take the bishop with a check, similar to the concept we saw in the Greco game. But what if the bishop just moves away? Well, then you go knight g5 with a check with the support of this pawn and if black moves his king then he loses the bishop if he takes on g5 then i take back with a check and next move i'll pick up this bishop with a winning position so this move h4 actually by by nepo is such an amazing move because you can take on f3 then you lose the bishop even if you move the bishop i'm still using this square to leash unleash a uh, discovered attack on the bishop on g4 so amazing move by the way the interesting thing to note here is that this move had already been played before in a correspondence game in 2014 this was played in 2016 i'm i'm not sure if nepo was aware of it or not during the game maybe he was but still this move has left such a deep impression on me uh so in the game he went bd2. Let's just look at some alternatives. If he takes on f3, we know g 5 and queen f3 is better, right? So that is off the table. If he plays bishop at 6, we still go knight g5. Here, there is an interesting move. Instead of taking with the bishop, we can take with the queen. Because if bishop takes, there is the same g 5 and queen takes g4. You take with the queen, takes, takes, rook takes, knight d7. And you will reach a position here where eventually you will take on h6 and the pawns will be equal but the h6 pawn would be weak and white would be better pressing in that position apart from bishop h6 you can even take the pawn on h4 but then i give a check you have to move back and after rook h4 uh, this is lost because there is a mate threat here and again a clearly better position for white uh, any more options here rook e8 check is possible i just move my king away and uh, this was this correspondence game that i was talking about he gave a check queen takes similar concept like what we just saw but look at how uh, white went on to win f3 king f2 very very calmly this is a weak pawn there is a weakness here so doubles up there and then brings the knight and even in this rook end game, white managed to create a deep passer and then he went on to win. Very nice game actually this one was. So coming back to the Nepo game after h4, Sanan gave a check on d2. That was his idea. Nepo simply took it. And then after rook e8, he moved his king here. Bishop f3, he could have taken g takes f3, but he decided to keep his structure intact. And after queen f3 he was a pawn up you can see his technique i think it's also one of the things after getting a plus position how do you convert it dominate this knight how do you do it two squares away move the pawn forward it will hinder the knight's movement f3 good move c5 pawn takes i mean for nepo conversion of this position is not difficult he uh played rook c1 takes here check g4 knight d6 and king g3 
and Sanan uh, resigned here because just knight f7, g5, too many threats against the black king and white is just simply winning. So, a, a great game by Yan and I would just like to point out that in your games as well, this is a pure Greek gift sacrifice but what Yan did in his game was take in a different way and it's just how top players are able to create magic on the board. They know one pattern and they are able to apply it in different scenarios as well. This is one of my favorite games of Nepo uh, because when I saw it, I was like, wow, is this even possible? And it also shows how tricky he is and uh, the World Championship match in 2021 November against Magnus Carlsen is going to be very exciting. So stay tuned for that. This is Sagar Shah signing off. Bye-bye.